Well, thank you all for your time today and for joining. And um, yeah, I wish I could see all your smiling faces in person. Um, but um, here I am again talking about Wheat Stem Softly. Uh, and looks like we're getting closer to having some solutions. And I'll present some of those here today. So I'm going to talk about um, some softly resistant wheats that we have coming out. Uh, some evaluations that we did that incorporated those, uh, as well as SP120, which is a Bavaria bassiana isolate. Uh, it's a insect fungal pathogen um, that's been used in other systems uh, that I think some of you heard about that's being explored for uh, pest management in a couple systems here as well. So we looked at that product as an infro application uh, for potential for soft light control. We did this in collaboration with Cody Creech and Amanda and their crew uh, from 2019 and then through the summer. I think, um, <laughs> I don't know if you all need to uh, hear me reiterate the wheat stem soft light life, life cycle. So I won't be spending a lot of time here. Uh, just note again that uh, this insect, the damaging stages is the larva. Uh, it feeds inside the tiller and that's where we have our problems. When it goes to pupate, it uh, cuts our wheat tillers and lodges our wheat, but it also reduces um, residue stand through that action, but it also causes direct damage through reduction in grain weight and size. Um, we also know that there's a parasitoid that seems to taken been taken hold mostly in the northern panhandle. Um, and maybe in some places and moving the central panhandle and maybe it's moving further south as well. Um, but this beneficial insect that attacks the wheat stem soft lye larvae, uh, we've been trying to do some research on this insect to understand the dynamics a bit more, making slow progress there. Um, but uh, there are areas in the panhandle that have seen pretty significant reductions to the wheat stem soft lye because of this parasitoid. Um, the dynamics are complex um, because you're dealing with the parasitoid, which is dependent on the host, which is dependent on the environment. So that all that suffice to say that uh, its efficacy is pretty variable across the region. So that's left us to try to find other ways to manage uh, this particular pest. So we've talked about uh, resistant weights and we've talked about different chemistries over the years to try to manage wheat stem soft lye. Um, SP120, as I mentioned earlier, is uh, based on Bavaria bassiana, which is a uh, biological control. It's a fungal pathogen that uh, different strains, different isolates of it are specific for different types, different groups of insects. This particular isolate, isolate that's used in SP120, my understanding is actually developed on flies for fly control. Uh, so I've been a little bit skeptical um, to expect that it would actually work for wheat stem soft fly, since the wheat stem soft fly is not actually a fly, but a wasp. Um, but suffice to say, we decided that we'd give this a try. There were some indications on some on-farm work that uh, might have indicated higher yield uh, with applications of this as a seed treatment. Um, in 2019, we weren't able to apply this as a seed treatment, but we did go with the manufacturer recommendation on rates uh, for an infro application. Because we weren't really sure what we were gonna find, uh, we tried to make the most of it by doing a split plot design where we incorporated both Good Streak, uh, which is a um, highly susceptible uh, wheat to wheat stem soft lye, and Fortify SF, which is a fairly new uh, release of a soft fly resistant wheat, um, which is a, a semi-solid based resistance, which is probably the more durable resistance of those that are available right now. So the point there was to split this by variety of susceptible and resistant to maybe see if there was any help uh, offered by SP120. We might see it in one or the other uh, depending on the reaction, those two, the variable, variable reaction that we see from those two varieties to wheat stem soft fly infestation. I believe we replicated this six times uh, for both the, uh, the application of FP120 and untreated, uh, as well as the variety. They were planted on uh, 917 in 2019 on six rows with 20 inch centers. 
and 30 foot long plots. We harvested those uh, last year on July 17th. Then we went to town splitting a whole bunch of tillers that we collected from those plots in early July. Uh, we split tillers, tillers and more tillers uh, and eventually got through it all. And I'll share those data here with you. So just looking at the infro application results, again, um, we were just looking at application infro of SP120 or no infro application. The figure on the left is showing the mean sawfly larval survival. So these are live sawflies. And while there is a slight bump uh, in the increase of sawfly survival in the no SP120 treatment, uh, it wasn't significantly different than the yes or the SP120 treatment. And if we look at the mean yield on those plots, again, this is uh, six replicates. Um, we saw no difference between treated or untreated with SP120 um, based on uh, bushels per acre. We also verified uh, whether or not there was any Bavaria bassiana in these plots. That's what's shown on that uh, messy looking petri dish on the right. Uh, what we did is we pulled of the uh, stems that we split that were infested we extracted, we took eight of those tillers randomly out of the 100 that we split, pulled the larvae out, and then smashed the cadaver against a, a, called a PDS auger. It's a generalized um, fungal bacterial auger plate, and let it sit in an incubator for 72 hours to, and then that's what you see. So that's after 72 hours of growth, and those green arrows are showing the cadaver splotches on the auger looking from the bottom side up. Uh, and what you can see is there's a lot of growth on those plates and sometimes that growth is associated with the cadaver. Mostly what we're looking for when we're trying to identify Bavaria is a white fluffy fungus. Uh, you can see that there's a lot of white splotches on those plates. Uh, at least at this time for this test, uh, we didn't have any, I guess, more uh, stringent approach to evaluating whether these cadavers are plus or minus for Bavaria, uh, but we didn't see a very consistent infec infection of Bavaria uh, in the treated or untreated plots. Uh, but we did find some occasionally. Uh, the green arrow on the lower left, maybe you can see my cursor here, uh, might be indicative of a Bavaria bassiana infection. Uh, but a lot of these, as you can see here, you can see the cadaver here, the cadaver here, really isn't any um, um, fungal isolate uh, associated with it. You can see some other splotches around the dish here. So at any rate, it didn't appear that SP120 infro application was effective in reducing wheat stem sawfly abundance in the following year. What was interesting was looking at the varietal split. <clears throat> so that's what these uh, tests here are showing. So this is looking at on the left figure the mean sawfly larval survival um, per 100 tillers, again, averaged over six replicates, looking at Fortify SF and Good Streak. We saw a significant reduction in sawfly larval survival. Those bars, by the way, aren't standard errors. Those are 95% confidence intervals, which basically means if they don't overlap, then we're pretty certain that those are significantly different. And then the chart on the right is showing the mean yield again in bushels per acre, showing actually, um, well, Cody can address this or Amanda can address this. Uh, I think we all experienced fairly low wheat yield uh, in 2020 and uh, HPAL was no exception. Um, so overall we had lower wheat yields and maybe that would have played out differently if we had had higher yield potential, I'm not sure. Uh, but at least we can say that uh, in this test in this year that there wasn't any difference in mean yield between Fortify and Good Streak, um, which I take as a positive. So there wasn't any drag, yield drag, due to soft fly resistance, certainly not in this case. We'd like to see it increase though, right? So diving into that a little bit further, <clears throat> I'm showing a, a kind of another look at the variety test results. So one thing that we had hoped to do, uh, Cody and I and Amanda, was to be able to split these tillers and compare yield on an individual tiller base between infested and uninfested tillers. 
Well, it turns out that our soft light infestation was so high at HPAL that it was um, literally like finding a needle in a haystack to try to find uninfested tillers. So what I've done here is I just pulled out tillers where we split the tiller, we found a soft light larva inside of it, and then we weighed the grain on an individual tiller basis and counted the seed. So what you see on the left figure is the seed weight per head in grams, comparing Fortify and Good Streak. And what we found is significantly more higher seed weight per head on infested tillers in Fortify than in Good Streak. Again, Fortify is resistant wheat. We would hope that we would see a higher yield potential anyway, uh, right, uh, on that basis. And then if you look on the right, we see that same result, uh, that same uh, trend looking at the seed count per head. So we had significantly higher seed present in the infested Fortify heads than we did in the infested Good Streak heads. Uh, and so I would pose this will actually might be a pretty useful metric in evaluating resistance or susceptibility uh, when we're uh, analyzing soft fly infestation at this level. Uh, again, um, if we had a different infestation scenario where we had more uninfested tillers, essentially what we ended up finding were uh, the only uninfested tillers in these plots were secondary or tertiary tillers that happen to have heads. Uh, so you end up with an uninfested tiller, uh, but with no grain fill <laughs> or really uh, low uh, substandard weights as you would uh, anticipate from a primary, primary tiller. Uh, but I think this here gives us some uh, idea of, of what that resistance is giving us, uh, specifically in this case with, with Fortify. And lastly, I confirmed this with Amanda and Cody today. We pulled some, I think these were head rows, Cody. Uh, from the state variety trials that were conducted down at High Plains Ag Lab, where again, these are separate plots. These weren't a part of this study. This is, a, I guess, a value added slide. Um, while we were down there, we pulled, pulled head roads from the um, variety test. Uh, again, we pulled out Fortify and Good Streak so we can compare them back to the, uh, the trial that we had going. But we also pulled a spring wheat, uh, some numbered wheat, WB44. 1-8, Cody and Amanda can tell me more about that, along with Spur, uh, which is a Montana, I think a USDA Montana developed uh, variety. And again, just looking at, these are infested tillers only. Um, and that's the seed count on the left and the seed weight on the right. And again, these bars are 95% confidence intervals, not standard errors. So if they don't overlap, those are different. So you can see on a seed count basis, Spur actually did pretty well and probably significantly higher than Fortify in terms of its ability to um, resist wheat stem soft fly losses on seed count. And then on the right, we see that seed weight, uh, seed weight per head, again in grams, uh, with some overlap there uh, between Spur, WB4418 and Fortify. Um, compared to good streak, which is our susceptible and uh, spring wheat. And who knows what's going on in spring wheat. A lot of those spring wheat tillers that we looked at uh, were empty seeds, empty grain. Um, so there's some other things going on with spring wheat that complicates this evaluation that maybe don't make this uh, apples to apples comparison. Uh, but at any rate, that's pretty much what I wanted to share with you all. Um, I wanna, I really appreciate everyone's support our grower cooperators that we've worked with over the years. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to continued uh, wheat board support for this effort that Cody and I and Amanda continue to spearhead. So thank you. All right, thank you, Jeff. Um, if you look in the chat, Jeff, you, you have a question from Brad that you can address while we shift to, um, let me just double check my list here. Looks like we're going to be Josh next, which I believe Dave is going to pull that one up. So Jeff, you want to address Brad's question? Yeah, I'm actually going to spin that off to Amanda. Um, in terms of harvestability difference between Fortify and Good Streak, I'm not sure. I actually wasn't there like Amanda and Cody's crew were uh, for actual harvest time. I, I can tell you how they split. They do split a little bit differently, <laughs> um, but that's 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 a far cry different than than what harvestability is. What do you mean by harvestability, Jeff? Do you mean 
clean threshing or just ability to cut it cleanly or how do you how do you mean specifically i don't know uh brad brad uh, Erker is asking the question was there a difference in harvestability of fortify sf compared to good streak my guess is jeff's or brad's probably referencing the lodging brad is that what you're getting at yes that's what i'm asking is i mean one of the big uh course disadvantages to the wheat stem sawfly is how difficult it is to cut the wheat when the stems have been cut and the stems are on the ground. And so I just wondered if there was a difference in harvestability by the combine. There was, there was, um, the, the good streak was already a little more cut. And so, you know, it flung out the header a little more, but on the whole, because there were small plots, we were able to get all of the grain that was there when we harvested it for straight yield. Um, yeah, the, it was just a little more pleasant to cut the, the fortify and then other things like we bordered these plots with Wesley and Wesley stood up pretty well as well. Thank you. All right, Dave, I, and, uh, other, uh, there's another question there, uh, Jeff from Tyler. Yeah, so he asked, could the seed weight difference be more due to varietal difference rather than soft wide damage? Or do you think their um, solidness consistently yield higher seed weight? Um, that's a really good question, Tyler. I think what, again, what we would have liked to have done was be able to have enough uninfested uh, primary tillers uh, that we could compare with infested, really get at your question to see um, what that resistance is giving us. Um, you know, if there's some yield lag issues going on there, or what really is that contribution of, of that resistance? I think since we're comparing weights of just infested tillers, um, I'm making an assumption there that, you know, that, that improvement in seed count and seed yield might just be, it would have to be an integration of both what the variety contributes, but then also the resistance. And uh, if you were interested, Jeff, I could send you those seed weights from what we actually planted in the field. So okay. you could know what the seed, the sweet seed weights were going into the field and then see if there was a drop off to, you know, theoretically to the soft fly. Yeah, I think that might help. Any other questions for Jeff? Uh, 